Hello, our Hebrew nation. My name is Daria, and I would like to introduce my wife, Aisha. Hello. We've been married for 14 years, and we are the founders of the Hebrew Israelites Recommence Organization. We have been, been commissioned by the Most High Yah to galvanize his Hebrew people in preparation for our exodus. We're going back home to our nation, y'all, Israel. Okay. As my husband just said, we are... Um the founder and co-founder of the Hebrew Israelite Recommence organization. And I, um, I want to go right into the title. If, you, if you'll notice, that's a, a trait of mine. I want to go right into the title, into the teachings. As I said, we will be doing teachings for our organization. Um, and we'll be doing up to 12, up to a dozen lessons for the, the, this organization. Um, you can click on the link in the description box um, to go to our website. And we'll also talk more about the organization at the end of the video. My husband will, um, Daria will. So I want to talk about the title, Who Are the Gentiles? And I want you to know that this is a part one and a part two, okay? Um, if you have not heard our first two videos, Lessons 1 and Lesson 2, I suggest that you do that because from there we're picking up here okay so you need to go back to the first video title you do not get a choice whether or not you're a Hebrew you know a lot of you all a lot of people get that twisted they think it's a religion it's your ethnicity you don't get a choice in that okay um, lesson two basically I can't think of my own title right now but basically um, it, oh, the myth of white supremacy. I'm sorry about that. So that's lesson two. Now, this is lesson three, which is who are the Gentiles? Um, we have a lot of confusion out there, us as a people. You know, we have some people saying that um, you have Gentiles, you have Esau, and then some people saying, well, Esau doesn't exist anymore Edom was destroyed so it's just the Gentiles it's just a bunch of foolishness and none of it is the word some of it is deliberate false teaching and some is just out of ignorance not knowing and that's okay but we are here to set the record straight okay we're here to set the record straight on who the Gentiles are who Esau is and so we're going to talk about that because that has everything to do with us going back home to Israel and like we told you in the first two videos, the Hebrew Israelite Recommence Organization, we are about the solution. We are about our liberation. We were given a mandate, mandate by the Most High to galvanize his people and bring them home. And that's what this is about because that's how we're truly going to be free. And so... I want to talk about that and I, I also have been saying, I'm telling you within three years, we will be back in Israel. Now you can stay here if you choose or, but I'm telling you what the Most High is doing and what time it is. As a prophetess of the Most High, you can believe that or not. So let's get into this lesson. Number one, I want to talk about, first of all, you do understand that there's the Apocrypha of the Bible. And once the Gentiles, which you're going to discuss who they are, once they took over the narrative for the Christian church movement, they took out, you know, about a hundred books from the Bible. So the Bible that we have is the word of God. It is the, the um, history for Hebrews. It is the message to the rest of the world as well, but it has been watered down, okay? God would not allow them to destroy the Bible like they wanted to do, but they did change the interpretation of what the Bible means because they controlled the narrative. What do I mean by that? Within my family alone, I know at least five or six ministers, okay? My family... Um, it's heavily in the church and they, I have ministers on every side, uncles, my, my mother, I have ministers everywhere. All of them licensed and ordained by the state. None of those schools, those theolo the, theology schools where they have to get their license through is 
ran or owned by Hebrews, your so-called black people. Gentiles own and control the teachings of the ministers. So what their interpretation of the Bible is what is because they teach all, all the ministers. You know, like I told you, I'm in, I'm in, um, in Chicago. We're on the north side and, and, and where, one of the places where I work at is called Gold Coast. You know, very wealthy area, meaning it's called Gold Coast. You, you almost have to be worth gold to even live down there, okay? So, but right in the middle of Gold Coast is Moody Bible Institute, which is what a lot of the ministers that I know in the Chicago area, they get their theological license through that school, and that school is in Gold Coast, and it is predominantly white. So, the European nations have controlled the narrative. So, therefore, they were able to change the interpretation. Why did they do that? They changed the interpretation of the Bible to hide who they are in this Bible, okay? Just stay with me for a minute because we're gonna break this down in detail. Why would they try and hide who they are? We're going to talk about that. However, if you think about it, in this Bible, you see everybody. You, you, everybody know who everybody is. Oh, the, the, the Ishmaelites, oh, those are Arabs, those, those Ishmael people. You know, all the Africans, the Ethiopians, all, you know, the, the Latinos, all that, that, those are Hamites. That's, you know, that's descendants of Ham, you know, and black people, black people. Do you notice that no one never knows where this certain group of people, the European nations, where are they in the Bible? Where did they come from? Are they in the Bible? That's why we have all these myths out there that they, they come from Neanderthal. Yes, it's Neanderthal in their DNA, but God created them as a people just like everybody else. And they're in this Bible from Genesis to Revelation. They just have hidden themselves. Because for all you so-called people who saying that the, the Bible was written by white people, excuse me, the Bible was written by Hebrews for Hebrews. If it was written by the European nations, it would be a lot more positive things about this Bible when it's concerning them and it's not. 95% of what's in this Bible is about the European nations is bad, okay? Now, if you have a problem with that, you take that up with the Most High. I'm just telling you what's in the book. And as I say, I have said in the past videos and what in videos one and two, I'll say again. You can say whatever you want for all you non-Bible believing Hebrews. You can say whatever you want about this Bible. But everything that's in it is coming to pass and already has come to pass. So explain that to me. Okay, but with that, we're going to move right along. The question is, and the title of the video is, who are the Gentiles? So first of all, my husband, Daria, he's going to read Genesis chapter 10 verses 1 through 5 and before he reads I want you all to understand that he's going to come from the King James Version that's the early English translation and the reason why we're doing that is for a reason um, because like I said they changed the narrative and so that's why we're going to read the King James Version first Hi family, and I want to take this time also to apologize for if I get any of these names um, mispronounced. I do not profess to be a Bible scholar, so um, if, if um, forgive me for chopping up some names. I'm doing my best I can. Genesis chapter 10, the Japhethites, verse 1. Now these are the generations of the sons of Noah, Sham, Ham. In Japheth, and unto them were sons born after the flood. Okay, before you um, go any further, I just want to go over verse one really quick. You do understand that after the flood, which there has been proof in the earth that there was an actual flood, you know, from all the things that have been unearthed in the last few decades, there um, there was a flood, of course. The world was so wicked, the Most High said, I'm just going to wipe them out. Noah, I'm keeping you, and from you, I'll start the new world. Noah had three sons, Ham, Shem, Japheth. Okay, Japheth is the oldest son. That's whose lineage we're going to read about right now. Verse 2, 
verse 2. The sons of Japheth, Gomer, and Magog, and Madai, and Javan, and Tubal, and Mashik, and Tyrus. And the sons of Gomer, Ashkenaz, Ashkenaz, and Ripath, and Togarma, and the sons of Javan, Elisha, and Tarshish, Kittim, and Dodanim. By these were the isles of the Gentiles divided in their lands, every one after his tongue, after their families, in their nations. Honey, can you read verse 5 one more time? Verse 5. By these were the isles of the Gentiles divided in their lands, every one after his tongue, after their families, in their nations. Okay. By these were the isles of the Gentiles, which means the Gentiles, the sons of Japheth. See, you have to understand. Let's understand something. In the Bible, everyone was set up by... When we, when we, when you don't know who you are and you don't know that you're Hebrew, you have to understand when the Bible mentions thirty names. Okay, when the Bible mentions thirty names, fifteen of those names are people today. Okay, that's why it's so important to 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 go through those names because fifteen of those names, half of those names that you're reading, are people today. Now they may have changed their names as modern time went on, but the reason why the names are mentioned is to let you know the descendants, the lineage. These are people, you know, just like we're called Jacob. Jacob's not here anymore. He's gone. He doesn't live anymore, but we're called Jacob because we're the descendants of Jacob. We're, we're a people. So when the Bible mentions a people, you know, different names, he's talking about a people. That's why that's important. And verse five says, in the NIV version, now the King James version say the 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 um the owls of the Gentiles. The NIV version says from from these the maritime people spread out their territories by their clans within their nations, each within their own language. So it's letting you know that these specific people, the 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 sons of Japheth, they have a specific name, and it's called the Gentiles. Because when they describe the son of Ham and his descendants, okay, we all know Ham is the father of the dark races, except for Shem, which is the Hebrew nation, okay? He has sons called Cush, Egypt, Put, and Canaan. Remember the Canaanites, the Egyptians, okay? At the end, verse 20, it says, These are the sons of Ham by their clans and languages, in their territories and nations. Exactly. Let me say that again. These are the sons of Ham by their clans and languages in their territories and nations. Did it say Gentiles? So far, it's only said Gentiles for Japheth. It hasn't said Gentiles. It, for, for, for the Gentiles, verse 5, for Japheth, what does it say in verse 5? From these, the maritime people spread out into their territories by their clans within their nations, each with its own language. Okay. And then the King James Version says the Gentiles and the um, NIV Version says the maritime people. Okay. But for him, it just says these are the sons of Ham by their clans and languages in their territories and nations. Okay. It doesn't say anything about Gentiles. Okay. It doesn't. So let's go, King James Version, Genesis, okay? Let, let's go to the Semites, which is the descendants of Shem, which the 12 tribes of Israel came from. That's our people, okay? God knew specifically what he was doing. He, um, Japheth, Ham, Shem. He divided everybody by bloodline. And it says, you know, who our descendants are. Elam, Ashur, you know, Aram, okay? But what I want to, the reason why I'm not going through their clan, because we're not trying to find out who the descendants of Shem are. We already know who we are. We're Hebrews. And we're not trying to find out who the Hamites are. We already know who they are. That's the father of the dark races. We're trying to figure out who the Gentiles are. And so for the, for the Semites, verse 31 says, 
after it sums up and names everybody, it says, and these are the sons of Shem by their clans and languages in their territories and nations. Okay. For Ham, it says, and these are the sons of Ham by their clans and languages in their territories. But for Japheth, what does it say in verse five to sum up everybody? Verse five states, by these were the isles of the Gentiles divided in their lands, every one after his tongue, after their families in their nations. Exactly. Why doesn't Ham and Sham say, let me read again what it says for Ham after they sum up all the descendants. These are the sons of Ham by their clans and languages in their territories and nations. Okay. Verse 31 to sum up all the descendants of Sham. It says these are the sons of Sham by their clans and languages in their territories and nations. But for Japheth, it says what? By these were the isles of the Gentiles mm. divided in their lands, every one after his tongue, after their families in their nations. Exactly. They were the only one given a specific name called Gentiles. Gentiles. So when you hear in church that everyone that is not a Hebrew is a Gentile, that's a lie. Once I, once again, the, re, the whole reason why I told you everything in the beginning is to let you know these people have controlled the narrative. Everybody is not Gentiles. Only the people of Japheth, the, the, the descendants of Japheth are Gentiles. That's very clear in the word. They're the only one called Gentiles. The descendants of Ham are not called Gentiles. They're just called the sons of Ham. Okay? The, the descendants of Shem are not called Gentiles. They are just called um, the sons of Shem, but the descendants of Japheth are called from these, the Gentiles spread out in their territories by their clans within their nation It's very clear. So the descendants of Japheth is the Gentiles. They're the only ones called Gentiles. No other descendants from Ham or Shem are called Gentiles. They're just called sons of Ham and Shem. Okay. So. I want to talk about that. And the NIV version says the maritime people, which is the sea people. Okay. So now that we got that straight, let's deal with, we, 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 we have it straight that in the Bible, the, the descendants of Japheth is called Gentiles. He's the only one called Gentiles. Ham and Sham descendants are called the sons of Ham and Sham. The, the descendants of Japheth is called the Gentiles. Okay, so I don't even understand why there's a confusion here. It's very clear. That's number one. So let's deal with part two of this. The line of Esau. Now, people... First, let's be, let me make some clarification here. The line of Japheth is a European nation. So if you will go look online and you look up the lineage of Japheth, you will see that it traces back to all European nations. All European nations. Okay, I'm not here to do the research for you. So what does that mean? That means that the bloodline of Japheth is white. What your so-called white people. The um Magad, Gormer, Magad, you know, there's all of these, all of these nations that's named as the children of Japheth are the European nations today. Okay? You can look it up for yourself. So we know we we're dealing with Japheth, we're dealing with the European nations, okay? When you're dealing with Ham, you know you're dealing with the father of the dark races. Think of Egypt, really? Cush, Canaan? You know, and, and you know, you've got um, the, the all the dark races, the melanated people, Ham. Shem is set apart by from itself. The bloodline of Jacob, that's the Hebrews, that's your 12 tribes. Everybody knows that. The scholar, everybody knows that. They just lied and, and just said that Hebrews are white, Japheth. I don't know how that's supposed to happen, but that's what they said. But I just broke it down. So now we're going to deal with Esau. Who is Esau? Because a lot of there's a lot of confusion out there, and there's a lot of false teaching. You know, you have some Hebrews that call uh, Europeans white people Esau, and then you have others that saying, "Well, um, they're not Esau; they're Gentiles." the The argument is is that Esau descendants were Edomites and that Edomites could not possibly exist today 
because Edomites were destroyed when God destroyed Edom. And I want to tell you that that's wrong. Edomites, the descendants of Esau, were not destroyed. Edom was destroyed. The Edomites weren't destroyed. Where did they go? It's no different than us. Jerusalem and Israel was basic, was um, eventually destroyed. The land as a curse from the Most High. Edom, the country was, um, was, was eventually destroyed as judgment from the Most High. But just like us, where did the people go? All of them weren't killed. Just like we migrated into the West Coast, coast of Africa when we lost our country, the Edomites went somewhere. Where did they go? Esau's descendants went somewhere. Edom was destroyed, the actual physical kingdom of Edom. But East, where, where did the Edomites go? They weren't all destroyed, you all. As I said before, that's why they took some of these books out because the book of Jesha smokes them out. Remember I told you they hid themselves so no one would know who they are? We're going to smoke them out today. We're going to smoke out Esau and show you where Esau went because Esau went somewhere. Esau was not completely destroyed. How the heck is Esau completely destroyed when he's from the book of Genesis through Revelation? And when I say Esau, I'm talking about the people, Edomites. So how were they completely destroyed? That doesn't make any sense. How they in Revelation if they got destroyed in the Old Testament? That's silly. Okay, and that teaching is wrong. The Gentiles are the European nations, and so is Esau. And I'm going to prove it to you in the book of Jeshur, and that is why they took it out. We want to read... Jasher chapter 90 verses 1 through 4. Now mind you, this is a strong history book and is one of the books that they took out. Remember I told you about controlling the narrative. This is our history book and it is the word of God and they took it out. Okay, but it smokes out who's who. It's very clear in this book who's who and this is why they took it out. Jasher chapter 90 verses 1 through 4. At that time, in the fifth year after the children of Israel had passed over Jordan, after the children of Israel had rested from their war with the Canaanites, at that time, great and severe battles arose between Edom and the children of Chittim. Okay. I want to do a little background here. I want to do a little background here. I want you to know that the book of, um, in the book of Jesha chapter 90 was written five years after the Israelites had finally cross over into the promised land okay the joshua generation had finally beat out everybody ran out everybody they we did that because it wasn't their land anyway and if you read the book of jubilees you'll see why that happened okay so now they're settled in their new promised land joshua says this is five years later this is um um Jasher chapter 90 five years later they look up and they they're witnessing a War between who? Edom and the children of Chittim. Kittim. Kittim, I'm sorry. Those are both children of Japheth. Um, okay. Well, Kittim. Kittim, Kittim is, a, is, a, is, a, is a child of Japheth. Okay. So, you can continue, honey. Verse 2. And Abinus, king of Kittim, went forth in that year, that is in the 31st year of his reign, and a great force with him of the mighty men of the children of Kittim, and he went to Seir to fight against the children of Esau. Okay. Edom the, is the place where they live, and the, the people that live there are, are the descendants of Esau. And so this king of Kittim, okay, which is Japheth's descendant, which is a European, okay, white, they decided... I don't know if they were right at that time, but I'm saying the um, descendants of Japheth, they decided that they were going to go up against Esau and fight them. Verse 3, and Hadad, the king of Edom, heard of this report, and he went forth to meet him with a heavy people and strong force and engaged in battle with him in the field of Edom. Exactly. So Kittim, the children of Japheth, went into battle with the children of Esau, which in Edom. Verse 4 continues. And the hand of Kittim prevailed over the children of Esau, 
and the children of Kittim slew of the children of Esau two and twenty thousand men. And all the children of Esau fled from before them. Okay. So it sounds like here that when Kittim, the descendants of Japheth, which is the father of the European nations, went against Edom, the descendants of Esau, they beat their butts. They kicked their behinds. They won that war. It's right there in Jeshua 4. They won that war. And they subdued them. They won that war. Okay? Um, and so... The descendants of Japheth, which is the father of the European nations, beat Esau and beat which in Edom, which is what was their land. So now we're going to read Jasha. We're going to skip down a little bit. 90 verses 7 through 9. Verse 7. And the children of Kittim continued their pursuit of Edom, and they smote them with a great slaughter, and Edom became subject of the children of Kittim. Okay, you hear that? Kittim kicked Edom, but the East, the descendants of Esau's butt, and they slaughter, slaughtered them, and they became Esau became subject to Kittim because Kittim won this war five years after we crossed over into the Promised Land. Um, Kittim beat Esau, the descendants of Esau in Edom, just like God said would happen, and conquered them. Verse eight. And the children of Kittim ruled over Edom. And Edom became under the hand of the children of Kittim and became one kingdom from that day. Can you repeat that last part about the kingdom part? The children of Kittim, after defeating Edom, they became one kingdom from that day. Do you hear that? The children of Kittim, the descendants of Japheth, which is, Japheth is the father of the European nation, so that means Europeans, Kittim, beat Esau and East and sub subjugated them from Edom and they became one kingdom, which means the Edomites became one in the nation of Kittim. Okay. And just for the record, just to clear something up, if you look up Kittim, Kittim is nothing but your modern day Greece. Okay, the Grecians, you know, in the book of Maccabees, another book they took out, the Greeks was the one, once again, coming against the Hebrews, the chosen people of God. What happened to nigger? Okay, this is an ancient old battle. Okay, Esau is now in Greece. Now, how can Esau blend in and become one kingdom with Greece if they not look in the same way? That doesn't make any sense. So it sounds like to me, Esau went to Greece. And then I want to read... Did you read 9? Okay, verse 9. Verse 9. And from that time, they could no more lift up their heads, and their kingdom became one with the children of Kittim. Exactly. Their kingdom became one with the children of Kittim. Kittim. The land, the city, the country of, of Edom is destroyed, but the, but the descendants of Esau went where? To Kittim, which is what? Your current day Greece. Which is what? White people. Okay, let's smoke out Esau a little bit more. Um, Jasher, verse 90 and 29 through 30. Jasher, chapter 4, verse 29. And during his reign, he brought forth an army, and he went and fought against the inhabitants of Briatania and Kernania, the children of Elisha, son of Javan, and he prevailed over them and made them tributary. Okay. Let's talk about that a little bit. I'm going to break down what, what I'm going to do a little history because like I said, I'm not doing everything. Some of this research you can do for yourself. But what my husband just read in J. Sure chapter 90 verse 29, he's talking about a king who took over Kittim, who ruled Kittim, which is nothing but your modern day Greece. Okay, you're, 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 you're part of your European nations. And now Esau, the descendants of Esau now live under Kittim, right? This is what J. Sure is saying. And so... It's saying here, this new king, he actually also took over some other nations. And those nations are called Britannia. Can somebody say Britain? Is that not a European nation? And Karenia. And I'm going to tell you what Karenia is. It's Arcania, which is nothing but your modern day, modern day Germany. Are not all of these... So, so Kittim 
took over e Edomites Esau and, and they became one with that kingdom. Then he took over Br Britiana, which is Britain. Then he took over Germany. Are all those white people? So you telling me Esau don't exist? Or did he merge with the Gentiles? Because remember, Kittim is not Esau, but he's a Gentile. Because Japheth is the father of the Gentiles and he's a descendant of, of, of Japheth. It's really rather simple. It's all here. But if you're missing this book, then you're not going to understand that. And that's why they took it out. Because the book of Jasha breaks everybody out, down in, 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 on who's who in this Bible. Okay? So, we talked about Esau. We talked about Edom. Edom and um, we also want to talk about, like I said, we want to go into verse 30 and then we want to continue and talk about more about Esau and the Gentiles. Jasher chapter 90 verse 30. He then heard that Edom had revolted from under the hand of Kittim. And Latinus went to them and smoked them and subdued them and placed them under the hand of the children of Kittim. And Edom became one kingdom with the children of Kittim all the days. See there? Jasher saying it again. Joshua trying to tell us again. Esau is under Kedem, y'all. Kedem ain't nothing but a descendant of Japheth. Japheth is the father of the European nations. You all, Edom was destroyed. The actual Edom was destroyed. The land, just like our actual Israel, the land was destroyed and desolate for years before, before um, they lied in the 1940s and came and, and started squatting on our land. But before then, we, that's another video. But before then, Edom was destroyed, but not the people. The people merged with the European nations. Okay? So you're talking white people, and they also took over Britiana at that time. Jasher was calling it, which is nothing but Britain. Kiriana, which is nothing but your modern day Germany. All those white people, y'all. So Esau didn't go anywhere. Esau merged because their kingdom was taken over. See, just like you had the fall of Babylon, you had the Roman Empire fall, you had the fall of Britain, and now it's daughter Babylon, America. See, Esau just keep reinventing himself and changing his name. Okay? Because he all up in Rome too. And that's in another video. That's in part two. So now we're going to go to Malachi. I want to talk about what does the Bible say about Jacob and Esau because like I said we're Jacob as I told you when you when the Bible says a name he also is talking about a people that's why those names are so important Jacob's not here anymore we're his people that's why we refer to as Jacob in the Bible Esau has a people and we're going to talk about his people Jacob and Esau but before I do that I, I need you all to understand so you won't be confused you have to understand the language of the Most High, okay? Just like our, our, our God, our Father, He has many names. The Most High, I Am, the Great I Am, the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. You know, Jesus has many names. They call Him Rabbi, Teacher, okay? They call Him the Prince of Peace. The Holy Spirit has several names. Comforter, you know, um... He is the, uh, I forgot some of his names, but he has multiple names, okay? The Lord, the Most High, refer to his people the same way. So when you're dealing with Israel, the Hebrews, he calls us daughter Zion, daughter Jerusalem. He calls us Jacob. He calls us, you know, Israel. When you're dealing with Esau, he has multiple names. He calls him the Gentile, the them the the Gentiles or heathen. If you look in the King James Version, Gentile and heathen coincide, especially in the Book of Maccabees. And it's not to be a put down, but that's what the Bible refers to them as. He refers to Gentiles as heathens and the heathens as Gentiles. Now, heathen means nothing more than a godless group of people. I think that would describe them precisely. I think the Most High is right, and He always is. Okay. He also refers to. Um, the, the, the European nations as the north. Whenever you hear the north, he's talking about the European nations, y'all. Whenever you hear Edom, 
He talking about the European nations, y'all. Remember I told you Esau merged with the Gentiles when they were conquered. In Babylon, he's talking about the European nations. Okay? They're the ones took over ancient Babylon. So whenever he mentioned Babylon, he's talking about the European nations. Okay? So you have to understand it's multiple names. Just like he has multiple names, he, go, he calls his people by multiple names. Okay, I need you all to understand this. So we're going to talk about what the Bible says about Jacob and Esau, these two group of people. Remember I told you we as Hebrews, we're Jacob, we're the descendants of Jacob, and then you have the descendants of Esau. And as you know, the scripture says in the very beginning with Rebecca, the mother, it was twins in the womb. You know, this is, this is, this is like a, 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 a movie for real. And they told her two nations are in your womb two nations that means two separate bloodlines are in your womb her twins were named Jacob and Esau you already know that story okay now you know I'm telling the truth about that so we're going to talk about Jacob and Esau um I want to read Malachi verse 1 I mean, chapter 1, verses 2 through 5. Malachi chapter 1, under the heading, Israel doubts God's love. And I'm coming from the New International Version. Verse 2. I have loved you, says the Lord. But you ask, how have you loved us? Was not Esau Jacob's brother, okay. declares the Lord? Is that just verse 2, honey? Okay. Yet I have loved Jacob. Okay, so can you read that again? Because I interrupted you. I'm sorry. I have loved you, says the Lord, but you ask, how have you loved us? Was not Esau Jacob's brother, declares the Lord? Yet I have loved Jacob. Okay, that's verse 2 right there. So this is, this is the Lord speaking to, to us, Israel, because we've been getting our butts kicked for 500 years. This is for current day. Malachi wrote this as a prophecy, and this is today. The Lord saying, I love you. And Jacob saying, how in the world you love us? All we've been through. Are you serious? And he's saying, of course I love you. Because what? You can continue, honey. Verse 3. But Esau I have hated. And I have turned his heels country into a wasteland. And left his inheritance to the desert jackals. Edom may say, though we have been crushed, we will rebuild the ruins. But this is what the Lord Almighty says. They may build, but I will demolish. They will be called the wicked land, a people always under the wrath of the Lord. Okay. Are you done? Verse 5. So I want to break that down a little bit before he continues. Um, so what, what, what basically is going on here, like I told you, Jacob is saying, you didn't love me. You don't love me. And God's saying, yes, I do love you. But Esau, I hate it. Now... A lot of people think that that scripture is very um, harsh, but it's the reality of the situation, okay? Esau is, represents the European nations, okay? I just explained that to you. If you don't believe it, then you know you could just turn at this point because I don't know how else to tell you the truth. Um, and he said, Esau, I hate it. Now, do he actually create a people that he'll hate? Absolutely not. He just knows their behavior. He knows their behavior. He's, and he's saying, I'm going to make your land a desolate waste, which is what he did. He tore down Edom. And they said, what did they say when he tore down Edom? They said, Edom said they will rebuild it, rebuild it again. Okay. And they have. Babylon, God tore that down. The Roman Empire, God allowed that to fall. Britain, mother, great mother Britain, tore that down. Now you have daughter Babylon. That's your four kingdoms. Babylon, Roman Empire, Britain, and now the last one standing, which is the fourth beast in Daniel, which is the first beast in Revelation, is daughter Babylon. So he's saying, I'm going to bring you down. Edom saying, the Esau saying, I don't care. We're going to build it back up. Now I'm going to bring you down because look what they do when they're in power. That's why God's like, I hate these people. It's their behavior. Okay? 
Look at how they act. And he said that he's going to call them the wicked land. See, when we go back to Israel, within a, with, with a short amount of time now, within three years, when we go back to Israel, we're going to break that down in another video. But just like we're going to be known as the Holy Land, the Holy Land of Israel, where they are. The few that's left, the remnant that's left, that's been enslaved, because I'll, I'll deal with that in another video, because they have um, to pay for what they did to their brother Jacob. Okay, they are going to be referred to as the wicked land. Those those wicked people over here. So you had a holy land and you have the, the, the wicked land. Two nations are within your womb. That's what the scripture is talking about. Verse five, you will see it with your own eyes and say, great is the Lord, even beyond the borders of Israel. Exactly. So he's saying, once you go back to Israel, see, God's going to get us out of here. That's what he mean when he said, flee Babylon. That's why we have this mandate now to galvanize his people to get us out of here with our reparations and go to our nation. Once he get us out of here, it's, they open game. He's, he's like, you know what? I got some unfinished business. I have some unfinished business with Esau. That's your daughter Babylon and the European nations. Because all of them had something to do except for one European nation. And I'm a cover that in the next video only one european nation had nothing to do with the atlantic slave trade all the rest of them had something to do with it your dutch all of them even if even if it wasn't building the ships they built the ports they built the parts for it they all conspired to enslave the chosen people of god and he says because of the blood that you shed for your brother jacob you're gonna pay daughter babylon is going coming down and the european nations is coming down simply because of what they did to us and their wickedness. Now, if you have a problem with that, take that up with the Most High. This is his Bible. I didn't write these words. Esau, I hate it. Don't get upset with me because he said he hate Esau, the people of Esau, because of how they act. I'm going to tell you one thing, though. There's a scripture in the New Testament where Jesus says, if I have 100 sheep, and one leave. I'll leave the other 99 to go get that one. That's for the Gentiles. You know. So. God loves the Gentiles that love him and truly serve him. You know. He doesn't hate anybody. Everybody gets a chance. Paul was the um, apostle to the European nations. If you look at Paul's route. His whole route. He called himself the apostle of the Gentiles. And his whole route is to the European nations. He don't go nowhere else. Okay, the other apostles, he said, give the the um, the gospel to the um, Hebrews first. And then he said, don't go to the Gentiles. We'll touch on it in another video. Because look at what they did with the word. Look what they did. Look how they took out 100 books out the Bible. So he knew they were a wicked group of people. Okay, but eventually he said, okay, Paul, I'm sending you. You go to him. So yes, he loved everybody. But as a group, this is a wicked group of people. I'm sorry. That's why the Bible says, I'm going to call them. God says, I'm going to call them the wicked land. When it's all said and done. I hate these people. Look how they act. And we're going to go more into that in the next video. And if you have a problem with that, you take that up with the Most High. It's not his, my words. These are his. And so what I want our Hebrews to know in the beginning of this, and we're about to close, bring things to a close here. But in the, in the beginning of this, you need to understand that this is an ancient old battle. Two nations are within your womb. Okay. Jacob and Esau. And it also said that Esau would live at some point. He'll live in the best places of the land. And also everything he obtained will be obtained by the sword. Now, who does that describe? Because the Gentiles, the Edomites have obtained nothing through loyal gain. It's all being ill-gotten through rape, murder, savage. That's why the Lord, that's why God said, Esau, I hate, I can't stand these people. Really? Y'all wicked. The wicked land. I'm sorry. You know? And for those of you who feel that you're not wicked, and I'm sure there's a small percentage, and I understand that. That's between you and the Most High. He knows that too. Okay? But I'm just keeping it real with you. We have an ancient old battle going on here. The two nations were fighting within the womb. The book of Maccabees, Greece was attacking, you know, the Edomites. They were attacking our people. This is before they were land saying it was about our color. I'm going to, 
they have been attacking the chosen people of God. We just, they just didn't have any power. You know, God allowed us eventually to lose our favor because of our ancestors' disobedience. And that's how they've been able to gain power and, and kick our butts for the past 500 years. But this is an ancient old battle, y'all. Okay, so we need to discuss Leviticus 20, chapter 26. And um, this, we're getting ready to close this video. Um, but we we want to talk about um, what's in Leviticus. Chapter 26, verse 17. If you could read that, please. Leviticus chapter 26, verse 17, under the heading, Punishment for Disobedience. The scripture reads, I will set my face against you so that you will be defeated by your enemies. Those who hate you will rule over you and you will flee even when no one is pursuing you. Okay. When he says a little background on the scripture, he was basically predicting what would happen to the Israelites back in the book of Le Le Leviticus. This is even before Deuteronomy. And he was saying he knew that our ancestors would eventually turn from him and worship false gods and we've already been over that and so not just worship false gods but also kill his prophets turn jesus in to the romans to be killed so the sins were going to be great upon is virgin israel and he was saying that this is going going to happen to you one of the things he said i'm going to set my face against you so you know we our ancestors were used to victory and they were used to winning and they were used to prosperity and success we daughter zion know nothing about that you know that's what he means when he says i will set my face against you so he basically removed his favor and turned his face from us um as a um, punishment for disobedience but the main thing that the scripture says, he says, those that hate you will rule over you. Okay. The title of this lesson is who are the Gentiles? You know, we talk about Gentiles, Esau and the European nations. And unfortunately I have to go over this because we have too many coons and sambos and, you know, bad bucks, bad winches. I'm sorry. And, you know, too many, um, buck dancers and you know not all white people not all white people well according to this bible the lord says those who hate you will rule over you he says the gentiles hate you okay and as your punishment i am i'm going to allow them to have power over you okay and if you think about it that is the worst punishment you could possibly give someone i mean look at how the europeans treat us really and they're over the judicial, the legislation, the educational, all the money, you know, they hold all the jobs and on and on the list goes, you know, and they rule over us. We're under this so-called system, which is your first beast in revelation that they, that you call white supremacy. Okay. And so the Gentiles are the ones that's over us. And according to the most high, he says, they hate you. That's why I'm going to have them rule over you. So I don't understand where our Hebrew brothers and sisters with this cooning behavior, not all white, all, you know, you get that from all this propaganda with it all, always being a white savior in movies. That's where you get that from, the Willie Lynch slave culture. Okay, as a group, God is saying, the Most High said, those that hate you will rule over you. He's saying these, this particular people, group of people hate you. And I'm going to prove to you, he's talking about the Gentiles. Can you read verse 34 in the same chapter? Um, I mean, verse verses 33 and 34 in Leviticus 26. I'm going to prove to you that he's talking about Esau, the Gentiles. He said, these people hate you so much so that I'm going to... When I put them over you, that's the worst punishment I could give them is to give them power over you. Okay. Verse 33 continues. I will scatter you among the nations and will draw out my sword and pursue you. Your land will be laid waste and your cities will lie in ruins. Okay. So you, I will scatter you among the nations. So now he's talking about daughter Zion and that will be in a, another video. He's talking about us because we're the ones that scattered among the nations. And he's saying how, you know, how Rome came and he said, your land will be a laid waste and your city lying in, lie in rules when he allowed the Romans to come in and destroy the remnant of Israel. That's what he's talking about. But this is the part where we also know because the nations we were scattered among is the nations of the, the Gentiles. Okay. 
So what does also verse 34 say? The scripture continues. Then the land will enjoy its Sabbath years all the time that it lies desolate and you are in the country of your enemies. Then the land will rest and enjoy its Sabbath. Okay. See, our, our ancestors weren't, weren't following, you know, the laws and giving the, the, the land rest. And he said, when I take you and I scatter you among the nations, you know, then I'm going to give the land some rest. And of course, the land was desolate from 70 AD all the way to the 1940s when the Gentiles came and tracked me down. Okay. So, but this is the part. He says, then the land will enjoy seven years all the time that it lies desolate and you are in the country of your enemies okay listen you haitians and, and you um, americans and in and, and the uk okay you are in the country of your enemies is god saying that these people are enemies or are they uh, is he calling them friends he's saying we're in the country of enemies we're in the country of our enemies and the definition of enemy is a person who is actively opposed or hostile to someone or something as well as an enemy is a thing that harms or weakens weakens something else. Exactly. Okay. Not all white people. As a group, I told you, individually, God will judge those Gentiles individually that truly love and serve him. But as a group, this the Gentiles, Esau, from Genesis through Revelation, has decided that they're going to hit you. Period. We have one more scripture here because, like I said, we have a cooning problem. So they, they just, they love their oppressor. I'm just trying to get them to understand what they're dealing with. Okay? Because you have to start divorcing these countries. This is the land of our enemies. We're going back home within three years. Okay, if you can read verse 36. The scripture continues. As for those of you who are left, I will make their hearts so fearful in the lands of their enemies that the sound of a wind-blown leaf will put them to flight. Okay, stop right there. You're not done with it, but he's saying, as for those left, he's talking about us. I will make their hearts so fearful in the land of their enemies. And of course you're scared. You know, all the lynchings, what they do in slavery, even the police shootings. Basically, he's acknowledging that you, 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 you're going to be under... These people that hate you are going to rule over you and they're going to kick your behind so bad you're going to be scared as what, honey? If you can read the whole thing again, I'm sorry. As for those of you who are left, I will make their hearts so fearful in the lands of their enemies that the sound of a wind-blown leaf will put them to flight. Mm -mm. They will run as though fleeing from the sword and they will fall even though no one is pursuing them. Exactly. So that just means because you're in the land of your enemies and because they hate you and they're so cruel to you, basically our, our um, ancestors were warriors and, and victorious, you know, and we're a bunch of cowards because, and that's a result of you getting your butts kicked for 500 years because he said, I will set my face against you, which means we didn't have any favor. Like, as I keep saying, there's no way we should have had 300 slave revolts and all of them failed. And like I said, I will get to the slave revolt of, of Haiti, our brothers and sisters in, of, uh, in Haiti. Um, that's in another video. We have a video specifically for you island people, our island people. Okay? So, this is an ancient old hatred. Two nations are in your womb. Jacob and Esau. That's what you're dealing with. And some of you silly Hebrews have the nerve to actually think that Esau doesn't exist anymore. Really? Esau and Gentiles are one and the same. They merge. Esau has been changing his name. That's it. Okay? And this is something, this ancient old hatred. You, you're dealing with a people that have decided from Genesis through Revelation that they're going to hate you. Okay? As I said before, you cannot business district this away. You cannot vote this away. You cannot legislate it away. You cannot pray it away. You cannot march it away. You cannot sing it away. Nor can you coon, sambo, and buck dance it away. Two nations are in your womb. They could easily, Esau could easily do the right thing and just love God and, and, and care about his people. It's like a dog and a cat in the house, like the example you use. You know, a dog and a cat can learn to live harmoniously in the same house. 
But we have a group of people who have decided what, honey? That they're just going to hate the chosen people of God regardless to the end. To exactly. death. Exactly. And not only to their death, they're going to pass it down to their children's children so they learn and come up to hate God's chosen people. Any ones who are not like them. Exactly. Because you have to understand, they, I mean, they are a wicked group of people. They don't like anybody anyway. I get that. But they hate us and you know it. And that's because Jacob I loved and Esau I hated. And we're his chosen group of people. And because of God rejected them, he said, I hate these people as a group. Okay? Because of their wicked behavior. Because of how they act. You know how they act. And so, and they've been acting that way since Genesis all the way through Revelation, okay? And he says, I, I hate these people because of their behavior, but Jacob I love. And because of that rejection from the Most High, the devil said, okay, well, you can be my chosen people, for real. And so, he uses them to do his bidding here on earth, to try and set up this new world order, to which is going to fail, by the way, um, to try and... That's what all these secret societies are about. This Illuminati you all be talking about in the Vatican, the Catholic Church. All of that is just them. They have made a pact with the devil. He promised them riches and power to serve him. And they said, okay. They're his chosen people on this earth. They do his bidding on his earth. Just like we're going to be used to for God to rule the earth through us. That's why he chooses the people. There's no other reason for it. The devil chose them to be his his group of people. And I'm not just saying that. I'm going to prove it to you. Okay? And I, before, But before we do that, I, I also want you to understand, that's that sick um, obsession of hatred they have about, about us. You know, you would think, honey, they, have all, they own all the resources and money. And they're still got this sick obsession of hatred and jealousy. Mm-hmm. You know, I was on a natural hair site, you know, I was just getting some tips for my hair and, um, you know, it was just a beautiful slideshow that, that the Arthur had of all the us Hebrew women with our hair. And everyone was coming on how beautiful the hair was. And of course, a, a Edomite gets on there and she's like, all hair, is all women have beautiful, they can't stand, they don't even like when our black men compliment us. When they P. Diddy, he said something about black women LeBron James just said something about beautiful black women on Twitter. I mean, these Esau women went off. Jealous. You the one with all the money and the resources. What you, scared, what you jealous of us for? But two nations are in your womb, you know. And these are the enemies of God. You know, they're the ones that was trying to look for the um, Messiah child and kill Jesus. That was the Roman king. That was Herod. That was them, y'all. That was a Gentile. You know? Always trying to attack the people of God. They do their father's bidding. When Jesus was saying, you serve your father the devil, he was talking to them, you all. That was the Gentiles. We turned the, them in to be Jesus in to be killed to them, but they were the ones following Jesus around, trying to trip him up. Mm -hmm. Have always been the enemies of God. That is why on the front of your dollar bill, you have in God we trust. They lied and told you this is a Christian nation. But if you flip that bill over, you see a pyramid with the eye. That's who they really serve. Okay? The enemies of God. So, like I said, I'll prove it to you. Revelation chapter 20, verses 7 through 9. And like I said, this is the NLT version. I always use this version when I'm discussing um Revelation and Daniel because it is a book of visions and it, it's the NLT makes it easier for me to they break it down in layman's terms so that I can break it down even further to you. Okay, this is um, Revelation chapter 20 verse 7 through 9. The scripture states under the heading the defeat of Satan. When the thousand years come to an end, Satan will be let out of his prison. He will go out to deceive the nations called Gog and Magog in every corner of the earth. He will gather them together for battle, a mighty army as numberless as sand along the seashore. And I saw them as they went up on the broad plain of the earth and surrounded God's people in the beloved city. But fire 
from heaven came down on the attacking armies and consumed them. Okay. So, let me do a little background here because in Revelation chapter 20, we are dealing with, um, of course, the end times. And I told you that the end times is nothing but the end of white supremacy. There is no such thing as the end of the world. Okay, and as I told you, they have been controlling the narrative. Okay, they've actually been teaching all the, the ministers and pastors. So they what they have done is wrap the book of Revelation up into one big ending. Okay, and it was to hide who they are. Revelation is a book of events. It's a book of past, present, and future. It's not, not just a prophetic book. We're already living in the first beast. Okay. And I'm telling you that within three years, God is about to, that's why this organization was born. He is about to get his people and exit us out of here and bring us home to Israel. He's got to kick out the northern horde through us by us speaking judgment and plagues to get them out, okay, of our land. And we are going back to Israel, okay. And the first and second beast in Revelation coincide. Because that that will be in another video, but that will be the time that the Gentiles antichrist is going to rise up. You know, there's been several antichrists, by the way. It's not the end of the world, you all. But they're going to need someone to look to because they have just seen the glory of God through all these plagues and judgments that's about to happen just for us to go home. They have to happen. It's not like Esau's just going to let us go. Like I said, we're back there. It's that time again. Okay, and so saying all that to say, fast forward to Revelation 20. We've already gone, we already in the first beast, and the second beast is coinciding. That's right now, that's about to happen. we living in the first beast, the second beast is right around the corner. Okay, I'll explain that in another video. And both of these beasts, if you go back to videos one and two, both of these beasts are have something to do with the Gentiles, Esau, the enemies of God, and how they're attacking us. Hebrews, right? And so chapter 20, when I say I'll prove it to you how they're the enemies of God, you all, chapter 20 is a thousand years from now. A thousand years, 1100 years from now. The, the Bible says that the earth will be at peace because God's going to lock up the devil for a thousand years. Okay? And when, as soon as the devil get out of prison, according to Revelation Chapter 20, verse 7. What does he do? Again, I'm going to read the scriptures and, and to put it into context. After we are delivered, we got our reparations. We got our liberation from this wicked land and we're back home. Mm -hmm. We will have a thousand years of peace. When the thousand years is up, the scripture continues. When the thousand years come to an end, Satan will be let out of his prison. He will go out to deceive the nations called Gog and Magog in every corner of the earth. And who is Gog and Magog? Gog and Magog is Russian. Russia. Right. European nations. European nations. And they will be the only European nation with actual land by the time God gets done with this judgment and plagues. Okay. Continuing. He will gather them together for battle, a mighty army as numberless as sand along the seashore. And I saw them as they went up on the broad plain of the earth and surrounded God's people in the beloved city. But fire from heaven came down on the, on the attacking armies and consumed them. And I'm going to continue with verse 10. Then the devil who had deceived them was thrown into the fiery lake of burning sulfur, joining the beast and the false prophet. There they will be tormented day and night forever and ever. Yes. See, that's what I'm saying. That's the point of this scripture, you all. There, the, the devil have used, have used the Esau, the Gentiles, to attack us in the first beast. That's why we're the, at the very basement of this so-called white supremacy, which is your first beast in Revelation. Your second beast in Revelation coincides with our exodus, which is, going, is about to happen, okay, within three years. We're going back home. That he's going to get us out of here um, first. Okay, we're going back home, not to heaven, to Israel. Okay. And then there will be peace on the earth for a thousand years. We won't even be here. But guess what? The children of Esau, in a thousand years, when the devil gets out of 
out of his jail, spiritual jail, you guys. You guys aren't going to see the devil thrown in, okay? Stop being silly. I've explained this. The first people he going to go to is his chosen group of people, Gog and Magog. That's, that's European nation, nations, you all. And you're telling me that, that they're not his chosen people. They are his people that he chose to do his bidding down here on earth. So much so that when he gets out of his prison, they're the first ones he's going to go to, right? Correct. He says he's going to Gog and Magog. Okay. Let, and the, the very next thing they're going to try and do is do what? Come attack Israel. Israel. Okay. And God's going to burn them up. And that's when it's going to be the end of Esau. Because he did say eventually Esau will be no more. He's going to wipe their, um, their, their lineage off the face of the planet. They've been nothing but trouble from Genesis through Revelation. Esau been trying to kill Jacob since they existed. Mm -hmm. Even the actual brother. Brothers. Okay. And that has continued. Esau was trying to kill Jacob his whole life. They were fighting in the womb. Exactly. And so what I'm saying to you all, you all think you want to, you're trying to find peace. These people have decided that they're going to hate you from Genesis through Revelation. Okay. There's no hope for them as far as getting along with us. That's in your head. Okay. There's no such thing as assimilating with these people. Once you understand that you're Hebrew, they have decided that they're your enemy and that they're going to hate you. And God says they're your enemy and they hate you. We just went over that in Leviticus, you coons. Okay? So, they hate you so much that even after we exit this out of here, a thousand years from now, our great-great-grandchildren, the first thing they're going to have to do, they're going to do when the devil get out of prison, he's going to go to his chosen people and they're going to come try and attack us. Ancient old battle. Ancient old battle. They're going to lose because they have lost their power. They're about to lose it now. And they're going to be silly enough to think they can get it back. And th that's how they're going to destroy themselves. So for you all, I know that their numbers are decreasing. The, the Bible, the Most High does promise that they their um, numbers will decrease. That's why they can't have babies right now. That's why they're having a problem with um, procreating. But they'll still be here in a thousand years because they're going to be the ones... That, first of all, they have to go into captivity and pay the judgment. You know, They've got to pay for what they've done to us. But in a thousand years, the devil's going to use the same people to come and attack us, Hebrews, our, our great-great-grandchildren. They're going to get their butts kicked. And then that will be the end of Esau, you know, because he did eventually say, like the Philistines, I'm just going to wipe them out. Okay, but this is what you're dealing with. This is what you're dealing with. As I said, and I'm about to close here and hand it over to my husband, but this is something that you cannot pray or march or sing away you cannot economic empowerment your way out of this okay that's why we have to go home the most High has to do it these people will never change they've been they're the same as their ancestors they hate you if you have a problem with that take that up with the most High. this is his bible i didn't write these words he said they hate you that's why i'm putting them over you, them to rule over you as a curse he said they're your enemies you're going to be in the land of your enemies. He said, Gentiles are Esau. They're our enemies. What part of that don't you get? Okay, honey. Part two, next video. Shalom, my Hebrew nation. I want to thank you for listening to the video. And as always, I urge you to share it on all your social media platforms with all Hebrews. You can also visit our website at www.thirro.org to learn more about our mission and to donate towards the fulfillment of God's agenda. What is the agenda? Your donations will in part help the channel grow by supporting the business operations, but mainly and most importantly, funds will help us go before the United Nations to collect our reparations. Again, my name is Daria and I am the servant of the Lord that the scriptures speak of in Isaiah 49. For I know that I have not come to convince you, but rather to fulfill a mission I was born to do. I walk in the office of a prophet and have been spiritually anointed by the Most High Yah. For Esau's reign is over and the reign of Jacob has begun. 
Like many of the biblical prophets before me, such as Moses, they were given armor bearers, as referenced in scripture, Machai 6 and 4. Moses' armor bearers came in the form of his sister Miriam and his brother Aaron. I have been most honored that God has sent my Miriam and Aaron in the form of my beautiful and God-fearing wife, Aisha, who's also a prophetess. In closing, the time has come to begin the process of divorcing ourselves from this country and preparing our mind, heart, and souls to flee Babylon. We cannot go anywhere without money or land. The Lord is going to use me to drive out the Gentile northern horde currently squatting on our land by speaking judgments and plagues. Daughter Babylon and the European nations will be plundered and we will collect our reparations and return home. To my Arturian Council lightworkers scattered throughout the four corners of the earth assigned to assist and guide me in the completion of this mission, I say to you, I'm here. I'm ready. Let's do this. Shalom.